Ladies and gentlemen, what will be the political future of the Orange Democratic Movement, ODM party, ahead of the 2027 general elections without the presence of Raila Odinga as the party leader? Do you think that ODM party will still exist? Do you think that ODM will still be strong without Raila Odinga? Because I'm actually one of the people who strongly believe that without Raila in ODM, ODM is completely dead. And I will actually explain to you the reasons to this. So even before I play for you a video of Raila Amol Odinga officially handing over the ODM party leadership to Wycliffe Oparanya and the former governor of Mombasa County, Ali Hassan Joe, kindly allow me to explain to you three possible things that will likely to happen to the ODM party ahead of the 2027 general elections without the presence of Ray Lodinga as the party leader. Number one, the ODM party will lose its popularity. And the popularity of any political party here in Kenya is determined by two things. Number one, it is being determined by the total number of the registered members and also the total number of the leaders elected in that party. And the reason as to why I'm saying ODM party will lose its popularity without the presence of Reno Dinga, it is because a majority of people who are supporting ODM currently are supporting the party simply because of Raila Amolodinga, not because of the party. Just like UDA party, majority of people who are in UDA, who are supporting UDA, it is because of President William Samuel Araputo and not because of the party. Also, I'm saying the popularity of the ODM party will decrease because majority of the elected leaders currently in ODM party will not be re-elected in the 2027 general elections. The reason as to why I'm saying this is because these leaders were elected because of Raila Amolodinga. So because Raila Odinga will not be in the ballot in the 2027 general elections, these leaders will not be re-elected. Number two, what will happen to the ODM party ahead of the 2027 general elections without the presence of Raila Odinga as the party leader is that ODM will not field a presidential candidate in the 2027 general elections. The reason as to why I'm saying this is because there is no any leader in ODM who qualifies to be a presidential candidate, who qualifies to face President William Samuel Araputo in the 2027 general elections, not even Ali Hassan Joho, not even Wycliffe Oparanya. So not unless the ODM party will form a coalition with other political parties so that they can decide on a presidential candidate. And number three, without the presence of Raila Odinga as the leader of ODM party, ODM will die. The ODM party will fade away. Why am I saying this? Let me give you a very good example of the Jubilee party. Jubilee party is currently dead completely. And the reason as to why the Jubilee party died, collapsed, it is because of the former head of state Uhuru Mweke Kenyatta as the Jubilee party leader was not always available for the party. Therefore, there were no parliamentary group meetings that were conducted in the Jubilee party. It led to the divisions among the leaders of the Jubilee party whereby a certain group of leaders supported President William Samuel Araputo and the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, while a certain group of leaders in Jubilee supported Raila Odinga and Uhuru Mweke Kenyatta, the Handshake Brothers. So the same thing might also happen in ODM without the presence of Raila Amol Odinga. So I want you to listen to this speech by Raila Odinga appointing Ali Hassan Joho and Wycliffe Oparanya, then proceed. Baba yuko karibu tu. Lakini chama chetu cha ODM itabaki imara. 
na mimi siendi mahali niko hapa hapa naenda narudi naenda naenda sio mke nikitaka nirudi hii mimi niko tu niko, niko karibu tu kwa hiyo nataka chama chetu itebaki imeungana pamoja na niko hapa ni watu wangu hapa niko hapa na gavana oparanya gavana ali hasan joho si wako hapa binara vya odm Sibana hawa watu si niko na hawa hawa Siku na hawa watashikana pamoja chama ambaye iko na msingi mzuri hawezi kusambaratika ati mtu mmoja maenda kando namna hii chama sio mtu chama ni wanachama na viongozi na mimi na kika hawa ambaye niko nao hapa wasi wanatosha wanatosha watazidi kuendesha mambo ya chama hata kama mimi niko kule Addis Ababa. Na kama wanataka kushauri mimi niko tayari kuwashauri. Hao watu. Kwa hivyo ODM itabaki intact. ODM itabaki intact. Kila hao hao waandishi wa habari wanaponeza porojo ati oh kuna mrutano ODM karibu kusambaratika Ati wafaranya anataka Joho anataka jini hiyo sio kizi Kila mtu anaweza kutamani msichana sio Sivyo Moja akimshika zingine ameshika tu Kama Joho ameshika si wafaranya ameshika Kama wafaranya ameshika si Joho ameshika Sivyo Mimi nataka hao waje hapa karibu na mimi shike mkono yao Mwana kwamba sisi tuko pamoja kama wana wanachungwa. Shika 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 hapa juu. Hello. Sio ni sura nzuri hiyo. Hiyo ni sura ya chungwa. Na mimi nataka hapa wakaji wa wajia wajiandikishe kwa wengi kwa chama ladies and gentlemen there are very very many leaders in the odm party strong leaders who can take over the odm party leadership the question here is why do you think raila amolodinga made a final decision to settle on ali hasanjo and wickliffe oparanya to officially take over the odm party leadership i want to explain to you the reasons behind this but before that just a quick reminder that if you are listening to me and you haven't subscribed i'm requesting you to please just take a second or two and subscribe to this channel you can also give this video a like so that youtube can automatically recommend this video in particular and also this channel to reach out to others so that we can grow together and to my returning subscribers i also want to appreciate you for your continued support without your support this channel cannot be where it is and that is exactly why i don't take your support for granted you can also activate all the notifications of this channel by simply pressing the notification bell down below so that immediately or every time that i post a video youtube will automatically send you the notifications and therefore you will not miss even a single video that i upload Thank you so much. Now let us go straight into the details. Why do you think Raila Amolodinga made a decision to appoint Wickliff Oparanya and Ali Hasanjo to officially take over the ODM party leadership? Number one, it is because of the loyalty of Oparanya and Ali Hasanjo on Raila Amolodinga. You can all agree with me that Ali Hasanjo and Wickliffe Oparanya stood firmly with Raila Odinga. They campaigned thoroughly for Raila Odinga in the previous 2022 general elections. And if you followed very keenly Raila Odinga's politics, Raila Odinga's campaigns in the previous 2022 general elections, Raila Odinga actually made a promise to these two leaders here. Raila Odinga made a promise to Ali Hasanjo that if he will become the president of the Republic of Kenya,
he will appoint Ali Hassan Joe to be the CS for lands, while Wycliffe Oparanya to be the CS for treasury. But this never happened because Raila Odinga did not become the president of the Republic of Kenya. So the only way Raila Odinga will reward these two leaders for being loyal to him is by handing over the ODF party leadership to these two leaders. And also remember that President William Samuel Ruto was watching these two leaders from a distance. Let's say, for example, Raila Odinga had just left these leaders the way they are. William Ruto would have gone after them. These two leaders would have decided to support President William Ruto and the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance ahead of the 2027 general elections. So also for Raila Odinga to protect these two leaders to be on his side, he had to appoint them to the ODM party leadership. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, for someone like Wycliffe Oparanya, he had already made up his mind. He had already declared his interest to be, to take over the leadership of the ODM party. And I happened to watch his interview, exclusive interview at KTN TV. Wycliffe Oparanya made it very clear that he is interested to take over the leadership, but also there are certain procedures that he must follow. And also finally, Raila Amolo Dinga made the decision to appoint these two leaders to take over the ODM party leadership because he wanted to protect the ODM party political zone, the ODM party voting bloc, the western region and the coastal region. For quite a long period of time, the ODM party has dominated the leadership, the politics of the western and the coastal region. And for the first time in the previous 2022 general elections, the ODM party did not perform very well in these two regions. In the western region, for example, ODM party did not perform very well simply because of the emergence of the DAP party. DAP party was also the affiliate parties of the Azimio No Moja One Kenya Alliance. And in the coastal region, where it has always been the ODM party zone, William Samuel Arapruto's party, UDA party, performed very, very well. So it became a challenge to the ODM party. So I strongly believe that by Raila Dinga making a decision to appoint these two leaders, he wants to protect this ODM party political zone political strongholds because William Ruto will take advantage of the absence of Raila Odinga and strengthen his UDA party in these two regions if Raila Odinga is not careful. So let us wait and see how things will turn out to be. Otherwise, I don't have much. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. I would also want to know your thoughts, your views and your opinions in the comment section down below. Do you think that ODM will still exist? without the presence of Raila Odinga as the leader. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, otherwise I don't have much. Until next time, my name is Jason. Bye-bye.